Then I'm Nani Payadama. I'm very honored to be here and uh, part of this beautiful ceremony. It's um, quite an honor for me to uh, travel a long ways and to be with my friend Carrie. And uh, I live in Oklahoma. And I'm also here partly because Carrie lives in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, so I'm also here to translate any words that Carrie might have picked up. <laughs> part of the ceremony because the, uh, the ceremonies that, that I take part in are in a way a uh, thousand miles uh, removed from uh, this type of ceremony, but at the same time they're exactly the same. So uh, like I said, I'm very honored to be here and I want to uh, offer some sweet grass the way that, that I'm taught in our ceremonies. I'm a member of the Comanche Nation and I take part in ceremonies uh, when I lived here in South Dakota and I'm a sun dancer and that's something that we're taught that once you become a sun dancer you're a sun dancer for life and uh, if somebody asks you to, to say a prayer then uh, you jump in your vehicle and drive 12 and a half hours and uh, you don't plan what you're going to say. You just stand up and offer words from your heart. And I have the best memories and best feelings uh, for this family. Carrie and for her mom Kay, for her grandmother, for Hal here. Uh, I never got to meet Carrie's father, but uh, I heard the most wonderful stories uh, about him and also her grandmother. So what I'm going to do is uh, burn some sweet grass, and Carrie asked me to welcome you, and there's not a better way to, uh, to welcome people and make something brand new in, in our ceremonies than to burn sweet grass. It has a spiritual side. Uh, just with burning a little bit of sweet grass, it makes a place brand new, something that goes beyond any kind of science or anything like that. And then the other side of it is very, very real and down to earth and practical because once you've purified things and made things brand new, then it's up to all of us what we fill the place with after that. And I was standing in the back and everybody was dressed nice and everything. And then right before I came up here, they put on all these different uh, ceremonial clothes. Changed everything, uh, made it even more beautiful, but also uh, very powerful. So I want to burn some sweet grass and offer a prayer uh, for Carrie and for all of you. Thank you, God. Outside we Creator, God, I come to you in prayer and humble way, thanking you for the blessing of this day. Thank you, Outside we Creator, God, for all these directions. So thankful, Outside we Creator, God that I could be here and be a part of this ceremony with my friend Carrie.
so thankful to be a part of this ceremony, this ordination. Thankful for this journey that everyone has made to be here, to be a part of this. I ask in humble way, outside the Creator God, that you bless this place, that you make this house, this holy church here, brand new, make this a safe place, protect each and every one of my relatives here, and for their relatives. I pray in a humble way, outside the Creator God, for each and every one of them, that you grant were chosen on good health on each one of them. I pray in a humble way, outside the Creator God, for the people that are part of this ceremony. Pray that you bless them, that you guide them, let their words today be your words. I'm thankful to be here. So many wonderful memories and blessings from the city of Huron, the state, and in South Dakota, and especially for Carrie and her family. So thankful that in the time that I've known Carrie that I've seen her grow so much and I have seen such a beautiful spirit that she didn't learn from school and she didn't learn from anything that she learned from anyone else. Thankful that Carrie has a spirit within her that she was born with. And I pray God, so I pray to God that Carrie will always remember that. That wherever she goes and that whatever she does, that there's a spirit inside of her that shines and that you give that spirit to her. She's done wonderful things, and she's always been open. She's been open to other faiths. She's been open to other people. She's practiced forgiveness with people who many people can never find room to forgive. She's shared love and compassion with people who have experienced most horrible abuses <clears throat> you could imagine. And I'm so thankful that she's here and that she's doing the work that she's chosen to do. And I pray outside of the Creator God that you comfort her, you put your arm around her, that you give her strength and you give her courage for everything that she's going to do in the future. She has a beautiful spirit and a beautiful future. And I know she's going to touch people in a wonderful way. And I pray also the Creator God that you guide her. And I look after each and every one of my relatives that are here today and those that couldn't be here. I know that so many people are praying for Carrie, for her family, for all the people that are here. I'm thankful outside the Creator God for being a small part of this ceremony. And I ask in a humble way that you look after each and every one of us. Let us hear, hear the words that are spoken today, songs that are sung. Let us find a way to put them in our heart so that when we leave here, that we take them with us and that we find a way to do the things that we're meant to do.
initial part of this wonderful ceremony. Um, whenever I've gone to the church in Mitchell and the church here in Huron, always fascinated by the beauty and all of the wood and everything that's here. When I lived here, um, I was a uh, thanks to Carrie and her family. I attended church regularly. Christmas, Easter. <laughs> Maybe a birthday or two. I'm not sure. So I would like for you to join me in the processional hymn.
behalf of the 68 churches in the Presbytery of South Dakota and on behalf of the 7,000 Presbyterians throughout our state, it is my pleasure and honor to welcome you to this worship service today where we will glorify God and celebrate the ordination of Carrie Fraser. As many of you, as were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself with Christ, there is one body and one spirit, just as we were called to the one hope of our calling. In her baptism, Carrie was clothed with Christ and is now called by God through the voice of the church to enter upon ministry of word and sacrament. We remember with joy our common calling to serve Christ and we celebrate God's particular call to our sister, Carrie. You may be seated. I want to welcome you all here today. As I look across the group, every one of you has been a part of this day. There's the Sunday school teacher, there's the people who have been befriended her. There's ministers who have been part of her spiritual growth. There's camping people who are part of that life. And the friends who have supported her and the family members who have supported her in spite of the fact that she's gone crazy ways compared to all of you. But you've kept her rooted here in South Dakota. And that is wonderful. Today we have a mix. We're so blessed to have different denominations here and people of different faiths. So as you participate in the service, do what is comfortable for you, because we welcome all of you and we're so grateful that you're here to share in this. You may remain seated when we do the call to worship, but please respond at reading the bowl of print in your bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt the name of the Lord together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to God of our salvation. Please join me in prayer. Almighty, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known.
confession. Mighty and merciful God, you have called us to be your people and claimed us for the service of Jesus Christ. We confess that we have not lived up to our calling. We have been timid and frightened disciples. Forgetful of your powerful presence and the strength of your spirit among us. O oh God, forgive our foolish and sinful ways. Before I uh, lead us in our prayer of illumination, I want to say thanks to Carrie. Um, on behalf, I won't speak for Jen, I know better than that. Um, but I guess I will in saying uh, thank you all for hosting us. And uh, We're one of those wild places, we're from one of those wild places that Carrie went all the way down to Louisville, Kentucky, that's where we first knew her and fell in love with her, and so we've been uh, blessed to be able to come and be a part of this service, so thank you for the wonderful South Dakota hospitality, which has just been absolutely fabulous. The snow was even uh, in the <laughs> Join me as we uh, pray and ask God to, to be with us. Gracious Spirit, you speak through so many places and faces and voices, we ask now that you would settle our hearts, that you would open our minds and our ears and our bodies, that we might hear a word from you, a word that arises from deep within us, a word that arises from this story that is ours, the word that arises from these texts. Quiet us and yet arouse us and speak to us that we may hear a word from you. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Our first scripture passage comes from Genesis <laughs> chapter 17. Listen in these words for a word to you. When Abraham was 90 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me, and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you. And I will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face. And God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. 
You shall be the ancestors of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Our Second Testament scripture comes to us this afternoon as Paul is speaking to Timothy. I, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God for the sake of the promise of life that is written in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. This is the word of the Lord. And I, speak to God. I have recently gotten interested in my family tree. Um, I don't know if that's what happens in midlife or what. I think it's I'm trying to figure out why I'm so weird. And I have some sense it has to do with all of these people behind me. Something about this tree uh, that has shaped me. We live and move in this amazing story. This cosmic story. A story about the creator of the earth who comes and calls a people. Our story goes back to this story in Genesis. Abraham and Sarah called together, called out into the world, and our story starts there. Many people's stories start there. Our Muslim brothers and sisters, our Jewish brothers and sisters, the Christian tradition, we have this family tree in this story of Abraham and Sarah. This covenant, this cosmic story that brings us here today. I imagine you have thought about your family tree, all of those people, all of those stories that are behind you, Abraham and Sarah, Ruth, Naomi, Solomon, David. We get into the New Testament, and Matthew begins with what? A genealogy. He paints the picture behind Jesus. He paints the family tree. There is something about the particularity of Jesus that can't be separated from this tree, from this history, from this tradition. Christ is born in the midst of that family tree. I wonder who is behind you. I wonder what your family tree looks like seems to honor this time, this faith, that we need to honor that tree. I would invite you to think about who are these people in your tree, both your family tree and your spiritual tree. Who have been the people who have shaped you? Who have been the people that have passed on this faith, as weird as your faith may be? Who are those people? Let's name them. Let's, let's become that family tree. Let's, let's name those people. Share some names. Who are those people? How can we honor them? Invite them in. Howard Abbott. Howard. Jeremy Carl. Bob and
a living tree that passes on a living, dynamic, and transformative faith. That tree that we are whispers to us even now. Was that it? What was that? The sound of the leaves of the trees being caught up in their singular collective wind-rushing
through um, different parts of your beautiful state yesterday, we would come into these valleys and you would see these where water had made its way in these plains, carved out its path. Water, living faith, blessing, finds a way. Which is good news, knowing all of the stuff that we put in its path. Knowing all of the experiences behind us, all of those weird people, somehow, faith finds a way. John the Baptist was the one who baptized Jesus. Jesus is a godfather. What a weird character, right? John the Baptist. Uh, wore camel's hair and ate locusts. <coughs> lived out in the woods in the wilderness. John the Baptist was the first rancher. Uh, and for Jesus, he is this wild, beautiful person. Thank goodness the water finds a way through all of the wild people in our lives. In our stories, the water finds a way. And it was that day that water found a way to carry at her baptism. First Presbyterian Church in Mitchell, and uh, Reverend Ryman, of course, is with us today to participate, and I know that it is a deep honor. Um, for Carrie Beth and all of us that you are able to be here today. Kay recalled to me in sharing Carrie's baptism story that it was very important that they take seriously their vows. As Carrie was being baptized, that they too were stepping into a commitment as a family to be raised amongst her larger family tree. And so that day, as the waters of baptism poured, I say poured on disciples, we might say sprinkled over Gary <laughs> that day, she was both confirmed and baptized um, in that moment. And it was then that her grandmother Pearl's poem, that I will read for you now, was embodied. Know thyself, said Socrates, in Athens long ago, and that advice is helpful to fulfill oneself, to grow. To grow into the kind of person you yourself would like to know. Control thyself, said Cicero, a statesman of old Rome. And that advice is solid and will help to build a home and as well to build friendships wherever you choose to roam. Give thyself, said Jesus. When he walked the earth as man, and that advice, if followed, as closely as you can, will make your life the loveliest, according to God's plan.
thing that just floats around is a faith that wants to touch. It wants to hold. It wants hands to be laid upon. It wants bodies to hold. In a few moments in her ordination, we will come and lay our hands on Carrie. We will transmit this cosmic story into a particular embodiment. And you, all of you, embody spirit, are called into your own ordination, your own gifting, your own particularity, to be this story, this cosmic story of blessing and love. Oh, man. 
song. 